What's up guys, so we got a good question from my buddy Armando up in Northern Kentucky who has a good question about how to balance your training both top and bottom. So he says that, you know, originally when he got into Jiu Jitsu, open guard was his focus, right? And I can attest to this, he was always, you know, figuring out all the newest stuff, playing open guard, sweeping, submitting, all that stuff. That was his focus, was that part of the game, bottom game, open guard, from there. He says that when he was doing this, he felt like he was really good from the guard, felt very strong there, but his passing, right, when he would end up on top, wasn't really strong. He didn't feel very good from there. So he identified it as a gap in his game. He started to focus on the top game, started to focus on his passing. Well, as he focused on his passing, he felt his bottom game drop. And so he's wondering, how do you balance the two? How do you balance building up your top game, building up your bottom game without the other one suffering? And so Armando, that's a really good question. And it's something that you'll have to come to grips with and something that happens to all of us. Um, and so I'm going to show you, I'm going to do some stuff on this whiteboard here in a second to show you, to sort of illustrate what I'm getting at. And then I'm also going to talk about the idea that you have to be careful sometimes when you're measuring your game in the gym, because um, there's, there's a tricky little thing that can happen sometimes. So when we're training in the gym, I'm, I basically made this little sort of uh, picture here, um, top game, bottom game. When we're in the gym training, let's say that we're talking about Armando. He says in the gym, his bottom game was good, top game was weak. So obviously he says, I need to build my top game up. So he starts drilling it, he starts focusing on it, and he builds it up a little bit. Boom, we make, we make a jump. He gets better, he's like, man, my guard passing feels better, my top game feels better, but now my, my bottom game feels worse, right? It feels like I just dropped back a little bit. So then he says, okay, so then I'm just sort of theoretically saying, so then we go back and say, okay, bottom, fa got, bottom game feels worse, let's focus on that for a while. Make a jump. Boom. Okay, so then we make another jump with our bottom game. But then, top game gets worse. And you start kind of going back and forth. And if you notice what's happening, is essentially you're taking this two step forward, one step back approach constantly. And this is kind of the way that it works, right? As you're training, it's just you know, it's just what's gonna happen. As you focus on one area of your game, and there's much more than just top and bottom, right? I just did this for simplicity's sake. There is gonna be way more than that, but as you focus on one area of your game, other areas are going to suffer a little bit, but what happens is, is as you continually rotate through and focus on certain areas of your game, you'll notice that you'll build them up and they'll drop back a little bit. They won't be quite as sharp as like those days when you were drilling them constantly, right? When you were getting those reps in, when you were only focused on that one thing, but they're typically better than what you think, right? They're typically better than what they were before you started that drilling process, right? So just in this, like, this situation, this was your original top game. We made some strides, and even though that we went back over to the bottom game, even though the top game dropped, it's still higher than what it was, right? It's still better than what it was originally because you, you made it better. Now, here's the thing you gotta be careful about sometimes when you judge your game in the gym. Your training partners, they know what you're doing, right? And they get wise to what you're doing. And because of that, a lot of times it's very hard to hit certain techniques on your training partners. But then you'll find that you go to a tournament, you go to a competition and, uh, or even another gym, and all of a sudden, all those techniques that you have trouble hitting on your training partners, it work like a charm. For instance, Chad, Chad rolls with me. I've been rolling with Chad since he was a kid. I guarantee you for a fact, if I was to roll with Chad, you know, and maybe if I hadn't met him, right, if I hadn't rolled with him for like all these years, if I was to roll with Chad, he would triangle me every like every two minutes or something, right? But because I've rolled with Chad so much since he was a kid, when we roll together, it's very hard for him to triangle me. He gets me sometimes for sure, but it's very hard for him to triangle me. And even sometimes I can tell he's like, man, like, you know, like he'll have this setup and it won't work as well. But then he'll go to a tournament and he will triangle people minute, minute and a half routinely, right? You see what's happening there? I find that in myself, sometimes I'm training in the gym and sometimes my blue belts and purple belts, right? Like mid-level belts, they're giving me more fits with the things that I use than people do sometimes when I go to black belt divisions. And again, it's not to say that, that if you were to take that black belt and my blue belt, put them together, my, that black belt would probably stomp the guts out of my blue belt. But because the blue belt has rolled with me so many times, he knows what I'm doing. He knows my setups. I've shown him my techniques, right? So therefore, he's way more wise to it. And it makes my game have to evolve more, right? Because where maybe if I go against someone that doesn't know my game, A and B will work against my training partners, my students, it's gonna have to be like, I'm gonna have to get to like C, D, E, whatever. I'm gonna have to go after uh, another move way down the line. And so you gotta be careful sometimes with your techniques and with your with your game, judging it with just your training partners because sometimes it's not necessarily just the best marker because they know what you're doing. And so maybe as your, your, you know, as your guard game was a little bit better, 
as it got a little bit worse, not much, marginally worse, right? But as it got a little bit worse, it might seem like it got way worse than what it really is because your training partners know what you're doing, right? And so if it drops even a little bit, they're gonna make you pay. But then if you, you should maybe go to another gym, try out a tournament or a competition and see how it works in there. I hope this video made sense, Armando. So uh, again, with you guys, if you're in this situation, if you ever worry about your game dropping back, it's going to, it's going to happen. As you focus on other areas, you will have a dip in some of those areas, but a lot of times what you'll find is that it it never goes back to that bottom level that it was originally, right? So after you build up your bottom game, right? You build up your ability to play from guard. Even though you start to focus on your top game again, it's not gonna drop and bottom out completely. It's just gonna drop down a little bit. It's not gonna be quite as sharp with the timing um, and sometimes things like that. Anyway, I think this video is long enough. I think I've made the point. Uh, Armando, thanks for the question, brother, and I'm sure I'll see you soon.